Uh, now let us deal with irony of fate or cosmic irony. The expression irony of fate stems from the notion that the gods or the fates are amusing themselves by toying with the minds of mortals with deliberate ironic intent. Closely connected with situational irony, it arises from sharp contrasts between reality and human ideals or between human intentions and actual results. Situational irony is a disparity of intention and result. Uh, likewise, cosmic irony is disparity between human desires and the harsh realities of the outside world or the whims of the gods. By some older definitions, situational irony and cosmic irony are not irony at all. Uh, we know about dramatic irony. Dramatic irony is a disparity of expression and awareness. When words and actions possess a significance that the listener or audience understands, but the speaker or character does not, when the audience or the reader is aware of something that the character does not know, we deal with dramatic irony. For example, when Romeo believes Juliet is dead, but the audience knows that she has only been given a portion to sleep. Uh, thus, uh, in drama, it is a device of giving the spectator an item of information that at least one of the characters in the narrative is unaware of, at least consciously. Uh, for example, in Pygmalion, uh, we know that Eliza is a woman of the street. Higgins' family does not. Uh, in City Lights, we know that Charlie Chaplin's character is not a millionaire, but the blind flower girl does not. In Chirano de Bergerac, we know that Chirano loves Roxanne, and he is a real author of the letters that uh, Christian is writing to the young woman. Uh, Roxanne is unaware of this. In Oedipus, we know that Oedipus himself is the murderer that he is seeking. Oedipus, Creon, and Jocasta do not. In Othello, uh, we know that Desdemona has been faithful to Othello, but he doesn't. A special kind of dramatic irony is tragic irony. Sophocles, Oedipus the king, provides a classic, classic example of tragic irony at its fullest. Uh, for another example, may serve William Shakespeare's Romeo and Juliet. So when Romeo finds Juliet in a drug death like sleep, he assumes uh, her to be dead and kills himself. Upon awakening to find her dead lover beside her, Juliet kills herself with his dagger. Um, and now about comic irony. Jane Austen's Pride and Prejudice begins with the uh, proposition, it is a truth universally acknowledged, that a single man in possession of a good fortune must be in want of a wife. In fact, it soon becomes clear that Austen means the opposite. Women, or their mothers, are always in search of and desperately on the lookout for a rich single man to make a husband. The irony deepens as the story promotes the romance and ends in a double wedding. Um, so, in spite of the fact that all the above types of irony are clearly defined, sometimes a problem arises how to distinguish the difference between them. Verbal irony is distinguished from situational irony and dramatic irony in that it is produced intentionally by speakers. For example, if a speaker exclaims, I'm not upset, but reveals an upset emotional state through her voice while truly trying to claim she's not upset, it would not be verbal irony by virtue uh, of its verbal manifestation. It would, however, be situational irony. But if the same speaker said the same words and intended to communicate that she was upset by claiming she was not, the utterance would be verbal irony. This distinction gets at an important aspect of verbal irony. Uh, speakers communicate implied propositions that are intentionally contradictory to the propositions contained in the words themselves. There are examples of verbal irony that do not rely on saying the opposite of what one means, and there are cases where all the traditional criteria of irony exist and the utterance is not ironic. Um, 
Another stylistic device which is often mistakenly considered that is used to describe situations that are ironic is paradox. In fact, paradox is a statement that seems to be self-contradictory or opposed to common sense. On closer examination, it mostly reveals some truths and is a powerful stimulating uh, for the reflection. Uh, now let us deal uh, with examples um, given by Oscar Wilde. It is awfully hard work doing nothing. Fashion is a form of ugliness so intolerable that we have to alter it every six months. A man cannot be too careful in the choice of his enemies. I'm not young enough to know everything. Seriousness is the only refuge of the shallow. Most people are other people. Their thoughts are someone else's opinions. Their lives a mimicry. Their passions a quotation. There is no such thing as a moral or a, any moral book. Books are well written or badly written. Whenever people agree with me, I always feel I must be wrong. The difference between literature and journalism is that journalism is unreadable and literature is not read. I love acting. It is so much more than real uh, than life. Uh, music makes one feel so romantic. At least it always gets on one's nerves, which is the same thing nowadays. The public is wonderfully tolerant. It forgives everything except genius. Life is too important to be taken seriously. To be natural is such a very difficult pose to keep up. Patriotism is the virtue of the vicious. Experience is simply the name we give our mistakes.